so I have succumbed to the booktube pressure and um, the fear of missing out and I am filming a video with 20 books to enter into the booktube spin. Editing Gemma here just to say that yes I have literally just got out of the shower so that's why my hair looks like that. Now, for those that don't know what the booktube spin is, it's hosted by Rick McDonald. Nope, it's hosted by Rick McDonald. And basically he has a wheel, I guess, um, of numbers from one to 20. He spins twice, picks two numbers, and you have a list of 20 books. And the two numbers that come up are the two books that you try to read this quarter. So I have picked 20 books off my shelf that I'm gonna quickly talk you through now mainly because i don't really know what half of them are about so we'll just give it a go um <laughs> and i because i'm filming this last minute dot com um i haven't got some very smart method like i saw alice at alice and the giant bookshelf she had picked off all the books that she hadn't done that were on tbrs last year which was a great idea um but i haven't got time to like be fasten um, so i've picked all the hardbacks off my shelf and would you believe there are 20 so i'm taking this as a sign that this is what i'm supposed to do so i'm going to run you through the 20 hardback books that i have on my shelf that i haven't read yet and um those are the 20 that i'm entering into the book chief spin so let's go from the top shall we i've got two massive stacks here I literally can't actually lift them all up. Um, so I probably would have been better off doing what Nikki's done and picking like the 20 shortest books on my shelf. But again, time is of the essence, guys. Time is of the essence. So we've got some quite chunky books here. Let's just give it a go. First up, we have Wilbur Smith's uh, The New Kingdom. Um, sorry, Wilbur Smith with Mark Chadbourne. Um, don't really know much about this ancient Egyptian set. I think it's fantastical. Um, I think it's sort of like a um, inheritance fight for the throne type thing. Um, but yeah, it's got like a scarab beetle on the front and um, I've been meaning to try some of them for ages. So I picked this up last year and I know nothing about it. Um, oh, and look, there's a little uh, little bird in a flower on the dust jacket, if anyone um, cares. Next, um, we have a book that probably most people have heard about. I have it in hardback which suggests that um, I got it when it was first released, which is quite some time ago. And that is The Turn of the Key by Ruth Ware. This is a Turn of the Screw retelling, sort of modernised version. Um, uh, I haven't read The Turn of the Screw either. It is also on my shelf. Um, but I think this is like a nanny who gets accused of murdering some kids that she's looking after. Something like that. But... People have said really good things about this one and I read The Death of Mrs. Westaway a couple of years ago by this author and really enjoyed it. So yeah, this is book number two. Sorry, book number one, book number two. I'll put like a list, a numbered order list in the description. <coughs> Next up, we have a book that so many people have raved about and I know that Emily at Nova Novels is reading it this month. Um, so I'm really keen to see her thoughts. And that is Shaggy Bane by Douglas Stewart. This won the Booker Prize, uh, not this year, last year, which, uh, well, not last year, the year before. 2020 is what I'm trying to say. In 2020, Shaggy Bane won the Booker Prize. And this, I believe, is about a young boy, I think he's gay, um, but it's about his relationship with an abusive mother living in Scotland. Um, and it's supposed to be pretty, um, pretty heart-rending I think so yeah that's number three next up I have a non-fiction and this is one I just picked up on a whim in um Tesco's <laughs> and that's Earthshot How to Save Our Planet by Colin Butfield and Joni Johnny Hughes Johnny Hughes um and this is what it says on the tin really how to save our planet so it's a lot on climate change and protecting wildlife and that sort of thing but the thing that really sold this book to me without me needing to know too much about it was the photography in it so there's some beautiful full page colour photos in it um of various 
wildlife, etc. Um, and uh, yeah, so that would be a nice one to get for this quarter. Next up is the shame of my pile, <laughs> and that is The Four Winds by Kristen Hanna. Kristen Hanna is one of my absolute favourite authors. I pre-ordered this. It came last February, nearly 12 months ago. I still haven't got to it. Um, this is sort of a Dust Bowl era set, mother, children looking for a better life sitch. Um, I think it will make me cry. I really want to get to it. So, um, Rick, if you can make it one, two, three, four, five. If five could come up, that would be great because I would really, really like to get to this really soon. Number six, we have quite a small book and I did talk about this in my autumn haul, I believe, and that is Tamsis Street. And this is a story on climate change told through told through 30 authors. So each author writes um, a couple of pages and it then continues on. Um, so you can see there's two, oh, one page here by Manny Raffi and then Michael Doncor writes a page and it sort of goes like that. So keen to see how that pulls off and it's a tiddler. So if that one came up, I would not be upset. Well, to be fair, I wouldn't be upset if any of these came on, but that one I've got like a real good chance of actually reading. As opposed to Empire of the Vampire by J. Christoph. Again, I pre-ordered this last year. Um, I think it was a early October release and I haven't got to it yet, but I have heard so many good things about it. Um, both uh, Ellie at Bivity Body Books and Becky at the Teacup the Storyteller have raved about this book. And I really want to get to it, but um, this situation is putting me off. <laughs> so if it comes up, it will give me the motivation to, to definitely read that one. And it's first in a new series. So I don't know when the next one's due out, but I would like to know if I want to read the next one, if that makes sense. Next is one that I have had on my shelf for quite a while. Um, and I picked it up because I liked the cover and the setting. Um, so that is The Mountain Sing by Nguyen Phan Kime. We're going to go with that. Um, and this is, I believe, about the Vietnam War. Don't really know any more than that. Literally, look at the cover. That's why I picked it up. And it's set in Vietnam. Um, and the author is Vietnamese. And I wanted to read more from Vietnamese um, perspectives. That country just really interests me. I really want to go there. So that is number eight. Number nine, we have another non-fiction, and this was a gift for Christmas from my lovely friend Anne. Um, and that is The Life-Changing Magic of Not Giving a um, by Sarah Knight. Um, and it says on the front, how to stop spending time you don't have doing things you don't want to do with people you don't like. <laughs> um, and yeah, that's basically my friend Anne in a nutshell. She does not suffer fools gladly. <laughs> um, so yeah interested to give that a go again it's not super big so and I know there's a few other similar books out there um so yeah keen to give that one a go and also apologies I forgot to do this one in my um December haul um it should have been in there I don't know what it was in mum brain okay this is one of my TBR vets it's like one of the oldest books I've had on my shelf um and my friend Kat bought me this for Christmas many 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 moons ago and I still haven't got to it and that is The Pink House at Appleton by Jonathan Brayham. Uh, and this is set in Jamaica. I believe Jonathan Brayham is a Jamaican author. Um, but this has got like no reviews on Goodreads. It's like nobody has read this book. Um, so I'm really keen to give it a go and see what it's like. And if, uh, if we can get more people reading it, if it's really good. So yeah, that's going on the list and we'll see what that's like. She bought that on the back of me going to Jamaica the year that she bought it for me, just if you care. That was number 10. So next up, we have a couple of my cloth bound classics that I have not read yet, but again, got quite a while ago. The first is Villette by Charlotte Bronte. I would really like to get through all the Bronte stuff um, at some point. I'm not gonna say this year, at some point. 
Um, but with that in mind, I asked for the let and I haven't got to it yet. I don't really know anything about it. It was written by Charlotte Bronte. I love Jane Eyre. So I got it. Um, so this is number 11. Next up, we have The Jungle Book by Rudyard Kipling. Again, look at how pretty that is with the monkeys on. Um, I think most people know what The Jungle Book is about. Little boy, Mowgli, lives with the forest animals, scary tiger, in a nutshell. Um, but I've never read the book. I've seen the Disney film many times. And I saw the was it Netflix or Prime adaptation called Mowgli, which was outstanding if you haven't seen it go and see it it was such a good um adaptation much better in my opinion than the like, real life disney remake mowgli check that one out um uh, but yeah so that's number 12. one here from an author that i loved um that is lost roses by martha hall kelly so i read the lilac girls not last year now because we're in 2022 the year before that and i was blown away by it I thought it was fantastic this one mm, i think this is a prequel to the lilac girls um and again i've got it in hardcover uh and she's come up out with another book since then something about sunflowers um so yeah i'd really like to get to this because i loved her writing style and i love the story of the lilac girls say so, lost roses is on the list number 13. Next, uh, last year's Mother's Day present, <laughs> and that is Clara and the Sun by Kazu Kazuo Ishiguro. Uh, this is a sort of literary sci-fi about a AI robot girl. That's all I know, <laughs> uh, but definitely interested to give it a try. And um, yeah, it's had quite mixed reviews. Um, and I've only read one other book by this author, and that was The Buried Giant, which I thought was okay. Um, I know it's not his most popular one. So, yeah, we'll see. We'll see what we think. So now on to number 15, and this is a book that I would really, really love to come up. Uh, and that is Stay With Me by Adabami, Ayobami Adabeo. Um, and this is about, uh, a woman, I think it's in Nigeria. Mm. Yeah, Nigeria, uh, who is, I think she's having trouble conceiving and her family and her husband's family are sort of trying to convince him to take a second wife. And it's about that family dynamic. Basically, I saw this recommended by Grace at GK Reads and it sounded so good. Um, I got it for Christmas, not this year, last year. Uh, and I've been really meaning to pick it up ever since, but I haven't got to it. But it sounds just up my alley. We have another chunky book now for number 16 <clears throat> and that is The Devil and the Dark Water by Stuart Turton. Stuart Turton is the author of The Seven Deaths of Evelyn Hardcastle uh, which got rave reviews. This is his newest one. I think it's sort of murder mystery with sort of magical elements on a boat is what I know about it. Um, really would like to get to it. I think it'd be really good and actually it will probably it gives me sort of wintry vibes so uh if it comes up i would probably try and get to it earlier on this quarter rather than later okay a sci-fi now we have the space between worlds by micaiah johnson i think this is a sort of multiple realities type of thing where um our main character can travel to other not worlds dimensions um where she has died in that reality something like that i don't really know any more than that but it sounded quite similar to uh blake crouch's dark matter which i really enjoyed so keen to give this one a go um and it's got sparkly purple bits on right the only book on this list which i'm not super keen to get to but it, i do have it in hardback it was gifted to me quite a few years ago um and that is Teardrop by Lauren Kate. So this, I don't know much about it. I think it's, um, I think it's YA. And Lauren Kate wrote the Fallen series. Um, they're in the back there. Oh, you can't really see that because of the light. Um, and I read, I think I read three of them. And they weren't really for me. 
um, typical sort of YA tropes that just, if you've been watching my channel and seen me talk about Shadow and Bone at all, you'll know it's just not my jam. Um, so I'm not sure I will enjoy this, but it is a hardback and I should pro I will give it a go before I just unhaul it. Um, so yeah, that one's on the list. And that is number 18. Next up, something which is quite different to what you would usually see on my channel, really. Um, and that is The Family by Martina Cole. So this is a sort of gritty, sort of crime-ish, thrillery type situation, I believe. Um, I read The Take by Martina Cole and really, really enjoyed it, um, which was sort of like a gangster um, situation. And the BBC adaptation of that was outstanding. Um, and my husband bought me this after I enjoyed the take about five years ago. <laughs> um, so I would really like to get to it because I think it will um, be a nice change from sort of my normal reading repertoire. And last but not least is another book that I have talked about on the channel because I hauled it um, in autumn. And that is Orphans of the Storm by Celia Imri. And this is a Titanic story uh, about a couple of kids. I think they're orphaned kids. Um, oh, I think that because it says it in the title. Um, yeah, and that's all I really know. Titanic orphans. We'll give it a go. Um, <clears throat> yeah, and that's number 20. So we have 20 books there. There are too many for me to hold up because um, there are. So the thumbnail that you saw is only a selection of these books, but I will let you know which two books won. Um, I will definitely post it on my Instagram. If you are not following me, then my socials are always linked below. I may try and do a short for the two winners, um, but I've never done one before. So if that goes horribly wrong, then there won't be one, but it will definitely be on my Instagram because I know how to take a picture. So, um, yeah, so thanks very much for watching, guys. Let me know if you've read any of these, if you think I should prioritise any outside of the booktube spin, and uh, I will see you very soon with another one. Okay, bye.